I'm one of those people uh, that the yeah. second I see a game has a jump and then maybe like an ability that raises you a certain height, I'm the kind of person who is going to look for the place where I can clip out of the map. Because oftentimes <laughs> a game has somewhere that you can like jump onto a ledge and there's like a pixel you can stand on and then you can reset your jump and jump higher and eventually break something <laughs> that was never even thought about trying to do. Yeah, and uh, most players won't do that. Um, a lot of some developers will do that when they try and break each other's games. Mm -hmm. I did that to some to some people <laughs> at Avcon. That was fun. Um, <laughs> that's okay. I tried to do the same for mine. Uh, and obviously, like speedrunners and stuff, and glitch sure. hunters will try and do yeah, that sort yeah. of stuff as well. And and you know, you 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 do the extensive QA that you can. You fix the ones that you think are the highest pro the highest priority. You know, the ones that most players are likely to encounter by accident. Um, you don't want people having a bad experience and getting stuck by accident. Mm -hmm. And then if, you know, if a speedrunner or a glitch hunter wants to go through and, and like discover these little edge cases, you know, more power to them. They know what they're getting into, you know. Mm -hmm. They get themselves soft locked. You know, they, they, they knew the stakes going in, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, yeah. But by not having mechanics like this, by having it, you walk around and there are puzzles. It gives you a lot, a lot less to worry about and a lot, a lot less ways that things can go really wrong. It does. Uh, it has its own problems. It's not mm. foolproof. Like there are certainly areas where you can, if I don't set things up correctly, you can soft lock yourself or whatever. And you know, mm. I, I just have to be careful. I have to. So I still have to do a lot of QA to make sure um, you can't, you know, solve a puzzle and then quit out before doing the next part. And then maybe you haven't saved the state. I didn't save the state of the puzzle correctly, or. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever. You know, it might be a bug in the save system where it, it saved that you solved the puzzle, but didn't save that the elevator was in position. Mm -hmm. And now, when you reload it, the puzzle solved, but the elevator's turned off, and you can't progress. Right. So, there's still a lot of a lot of QA that has to be done. I still have to make sure I, I, you know, extensively test it and look for all those edge cases. <laughs> but I think generally, yes, it, it does simplify it a lot in terms of. Um, the QA I have to do, and especially as a as a one person development team, that is a huge bonus. Um, I mean, I, I say one person. I I I'd always mention that I I have got uh, audio and a writer doing part time work on it as well. And at some point, I'm probably closer to towards release. I'll actually hire someone to do QA as well. Mm -hmm. So I have someone doing like full time QA on it for a while. Uh, so yeah, so <laughs> but. Uh, the game is certainly simplified a lot by by just completely removing certain mechanics. Well, yeah, obviously there was still going to be QA, and you need to make sure the puzzles work and all that. Like, but it, my my point was that, like you have less moving parts, so there's less that can go wrong. Yes, yes, I have I have a a different set of moving parts. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But hopefully they're le they're less prone to um, weird edge cases. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, if, if something goes wrong with the moving parts I've got in my game, it's generally because I haven't set it up correctly. Right, right. You know, it's usually a fairly obvious problem. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, like the more, like, I think this comes down to how how uh, dynamically interactive the game is. Mm. So, in a game like mine, it's the it's it's less dynamically interactive. It's it's still very interactive. You interact with a lot. I'm using the word dynamic as in how how freeform the interaction is with the player. Mm -hmm. So if you think in a game like uh, like a first person shooter, it's it's very dynamic. You can move around in any direction. You can jump. Sometimes you can climb ledges. You can shoot a variety of guns and explode things and monsters running everywhere. There's a lot of interactions that can take place in very unique and and dynamic ways. Whereas in a more strictly designed puzzle game like my, mine, the interactions are fairly limited to what you do when solving the puzzle. Mm -hmm. It's the, you know, the different buttons you press to cycle through the different glyphs or mo turn things around. Um, so that's not to make like a judgment call on what's better or what's not. They're different styles of game. But I think that by, by making a less dynamic experience mm -hmm. um, and more sort of almost pre-programmed in a way, then it potentially makes it easier or potentially reduces the number of edge cases mm -hmm. uh, and, and makes the solutions potentially easier to find. If you encounter a bug, you can probably isolate exactly what caused it. Like, right. oh, you know, I, I forgot to enable the 
you know, the Boolean on this thing, that's why it, it didn't activate properly. Mm -hmm. As opposed to, I, I leapt up this wall, slid halfway down here, fired the grenade, which launched me backwards a bit, which made a clip of the wall, and, you know, who knows what else. So, yeah. <laughs> Well, one thing I was thinking of by not having a jump button is it introduces a very different set of environment design issues. So, in the original version of Final Fantasy XIV, um, they didn't have a jump button in that version. But anytime there was a slight lip on the ground, you had to walk all the way around it so you could actually navigate to get to the, the level up above that. And they fixed that by just adding a jump button in the updated versions because they needed something there it just felt bad to not have that so you need to make sure that you don't have those bits where it just feels weird to na uh, to navigate around a zone because that jump button is lacking yeah that i mean that comes down to level design mm. in a bit there it's like you know making sure that you don't place obstacles that just get in the way mm -hmm. and, and in a way that feels tedious mm. you know and I, I do that when i'm designing my game my, my game and blocking out the levels um and i build a path like is this path too long does it does it feel like too much of a nuisance to have to walk around here you know if, if there is a slight ledge generally if, if you're not supposed to get up there i like to separate it dramatically and that, that kind of works for the aesthetics of my game it's supposed to be like this this massive feeling not necessarily massive in, in scope, because again, one person team, but massive feeling alien environment with these giant like mega structures and huge <laughs> alien buildings. So if there's a ledge you can't get up to, the ledge is up here. It's right, like a right, huge right. ledge. Um, if there's a gap is it to cross, then it's like a, it's a chasm, you know. So that helps a lot in my game. Um, and if it's a small little lip, then generally I'll just I'll place a ramp there or I'll just slope the collision up so you can just walk up it. Mm -hmm. if, it's, if it's that low that it looks like you should be able to step up it, then I allow you to step up it because mm -hmm. I don't want it to get in the way. If it's right. impassable, it looks impassable. Right, right. And because of the... Well, yeah, it, it doesn't feel weird when there's just random walls around the place because of the, the setup you have. It's like, okay, well, yeah, this alien planet, okay, yeah, they're doing things here. Why, why are they glowing orange things? That's just as weird. <laughs> There's um, well, there's as an example, there's there's one part in in one of the environments I designed recently, where it's a little hard to say. So the path joins onto this sort of like hexagon platform. Mm -hmm. It comes up, it hooks a little bit to the left, mm -hmm. to the, the right. I'm not sure what direction I'm on screen here, but it hooks a little bit off to the right, mm -hmm. and then into this corner of this hexagon platform, and then from the adjoining side of it. Mm -hmm. the, another path comes up that way and it goes out out there um which means if you walk straight ahead you have to hook a little bit to the right and weave around this little gap mm. and what i found was before i even play test with other people just play testing with myself i'd walk up and you'd want to cut the corner because mm. but you'd constantly hit this little invisible wall which is it's only a very small little triangle that it gets bigger and bigger as you get further away, obviously. Mm -hmm. But um, if you start trying to cut the corner a little bit too close, you can't walk past because there's an invisible wall there. Mm -hmm. And what I ended up doing was just pushing the wall back and placing invisible ground collision in that gap, basically out in space to a point where it felt it wasn't too large, mm -hmm. um, which allows you to basically cut the corner and walk over empty space. Um, mm -hmm. But now nobody, when I saw people play it, Nobody hit that wall. And nobody, I think, walked far enough out that they noticed they were walking across open air. Mm. You know? So it's it's a real kind of like finessing the level design um, around it to make sure that being able to navigate the environment feels natural mm. um, without things getting in your way unless they're supposed to. Right. So that's a very specific example in that one little case, but yeah. No, I, I'm, but that's I'm the sort of thing I have to do. And I did the same sort of thing in the... Um, in in the the demo you played as well, there's <laughs> there's certain areas where I just I I built custom collision around certain parts of the environment <laughs> uh, to make navigating it feel more natural and smooth um, than if I had just used the geometry collision that's already there. <laughs>